Good evening, everybody. It's 6.30 p.m. Today is Tuesday, October 19th, 2021. And this is a regularly scheduled meeting of the Marquette Township Board. If you would join us in the pledge, we'd appreciate it. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right. Our clerk, Ritari, is at a conference this week. So we have Deputy Clerk Addie Bushane with us, taking minutes and recording everything. She will not vote, but she will substitute for the clerk's responsibilities. Um, we don't have a Zoom connection tonight, so we don't know if we have any emails. I'm sure Randy would have gotten them to me if we did. Um, we have no public here, so why don't you do the roll call, Manny? And we'll start there. Lynn Durant here. Brent, oops, Addie Boshane here. Ernest Johnson here. Linda Winslow present. Dan Everson here. John Marcus present. Pete Larue here. John Kangas present. Staff. Roger Zappa. Zappa. Here. And Dan Shenanigan. <laughs> Shenanigan. <laughs> yeah, more Shenanigan. <laughs> and Superintendent of Public Works Lenny Bodinas oh, is here too. Lenny, okay. So John and Dan and Lenny are staff. Okay. And all of the board is here except Randy. All right. So we have no public comment. Tonight's consent agenda consists of approval of regular meeting minutes of October 5th, 2021, budget work session minutes of October 7th. We have bills payable in the amount of $166,165.98. Uh, received committee and other reports. We don't have any. Correspondence not requiring board action. There's a Iron Ore Heritage Recreation Authority board meeting packet for September 22nd. And we do have the County Board of Apportionment uh, in regard to Marquette Township. Let me sidetrack just for one second since it's not a, uh, an agenda item. You received a copy of that letter that we sent to the county. Randy and I both spoke we, twice. We did. At that commission um, meeting. And there were multiple options available for mapping to reapportion the township after the 2020 census. And if you remember or know, the township is split right now in voting districts from north and south of U.S. Highway 41. So Randy and I were championing to get, with the reapportionment, get that put back together in one. Because we've been with that for a long time. So the initial meeting that they had, I think it was on a Thursday a couple weeks ago, uh, the deadline was the following Tuesday. So they were trying to settle that. They did make a motion. The motion was not handled correctly, and the county clerk and the attorney decided that they were going to redo the meeting and have another discussion so that the motion would be correct. I don't remember exactly here. I don't know if I heard, you know, Randy and I were following the meeting online. So they did that, and um, I got on again, Randy got on again and spoke and said, you know, we really need to have an option. And there was one available that put us together. Um, we went through the same thing that the letter said. They did end up having another discussion and re-voting and chose another map, which put us all back together. And it actually was beneficial to the city too. They have seven voting districts. And I think the suggested one gave them like nine or 10 so by taking the map that put us in one, it left the cities with seven and they didn't have to increase. So all in all, even though the motion was kind of a mess and the, quite a few people spoke, um, because they were able to re-discuss it and had some time to think about it, we did benefit. So the letter helped, our speaking helped, um, and I think it helped the city too. So I just wanted to segue on that because you didn't, I was gonna have Randy explain it tonight, but since he wasn't here, I wanted to do that for you. Move to approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. So 
John Marks and Pete LeBrew. And then the financial statements included in here September 2021. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Were you going to say something, Linda? Um, maybe um, later on you can address if they decided to increase or decrease the number of commissioners. Oh, that's a good point. Uh, they want to leave it at six. The options were five and six. We voted for an odd number just because that's the way government is, especially in and mm -hmm. even private uh, boards and committees. And they said that it's been 20 years. It's never been an issue with um, tie votes or anything like that. So they wanted to leave it the way it was. So there will be another election. I shouldn't say another, but an election for next year to kind of reapportion everything out because we have two commissioners right now. So we'll see what the ballot looks like next November. Thank you for bringing that up. All right, we need approval of the remainder of the agenda unless somebody wants to make some changes. So Support. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. So I don't know if it was John and Dan. <coughs> All right. I'm not aware of any conflicts of interest with this agenda. Let's start with staff reports tonight, and that means the fire chief, Shanahan. some good training with, uh, I don't know if anybody got a chance to see when they were, we had a meeting that night also. We had our uh, Michigan Propane Gas Association gave us, uh, they came up and we got to do some live fire training over at the Westwood Mall. And that happens every maybe five years they come to the UP and not necessarily for our cap. So we were very fortunate to get them this year. Um, we had 10 guys attend the UP EMS conference. Unfortunately, that was via Zoom. This year, they uh, three weeks before the death, before the start, beginning of September, they decided to do it via Zoom. They were a little concerned about the COVID. You don't want EMS to be a super spreader, so it was done via Zoom, which was was okay. Um, software training is going well. We've had a couple trainings in our new software that we'll be starting with next year. Our grants, AFG, uh, Assistance Firefighter Grant, we were not awarded this year. Walmart, I, I have it here applied, and we got a phone call the other day. We were awarded a grant with Walmart, that's Captain Redridge doing it. And I also think we applied for the HRSA grant, that's a code provider relief uh, funding. And uh, we are applying, I should have said, should have put in there. That's quite, it's uh, federal government, so it's quite complicated. And we need a lot of help from our filler on that one. Miscellaneous ladders were all tested and passed, and hopefully the new pickup is delivered next month, which I was very surprised to hear, very happy to hear. But we just want to remind, remind you there will be additional charges. We do need to upfit it yet. So, does anybody have any questions on anything? So, so you applied for a Walmart grant and were awarded, and what is that grant for? The, the grant is to, it's a twenty-five hundred dollar grant. Uh, we were planning on using it actually to upgrade one of the laptops in our in our trucks. We've been talking about doing that for a few years now, and um, and we'll also get some fire prevention stuff too. But it's a twenty-five hundred dollar grant. That's new this year, and uh, we just found out yesterday actually. It was a little bit. Yeah, the HRSA grant we're putting a little bit of time in. We don't know how much actually we we'll could possibly get even. So. So you've had quite a few inspections too. We've got new things moving around, and yes, yeah. that's a good thing. Yeah, those are going pretty well. Um, I think mean, there's nothing really out of the ordinary there. We got a real good system going with the county now, so we're trying not to um, give that have them give an occupancy permit without notifying us. So we're going together. We've been working on that for a little bit. Has been working on it a little bit. And the um, not having the actual alarm go off just the pagers and dispatch that's working that's working okay. okay we'll say though and i'll be the first and <coughs> one of those people that's nice out on a sunday i depends what you're wearing my pager's not always on me and we had and then we'll talk about it next month but we did have a structure fire 
and I heard the siren go off, and I called, I would carry, some of us carry radios, and I said, what do we have? So, we still need the siren. <laughs> okay. But yeah. But Maybe just turn, it on, Sundays, then. <laughs> just turn <laughs> it on Sundays then. Just turn it on Sundays. Just turn it on Sundays, yeah. <laughs> you know, no, we can't do that, but yeah. No, that's working out pretty well. Good. Yeah. I have a question. Where's Dollar Tree in that? Going in right over there, the old the Pier 1. Yeah. Oh, okay. Next, next to Michael's. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. That'll give him some nice room and right on the highway. Mm -hmm. That'll be a dollar and a half pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> so nothing else with any crazy rescues no, or problems? No, no, nothing. Uh, Good. Not in September, no, nothing was pretty, you know. You've still been covering the city. I heard a few calls yeah, for them, um, backing yeah, them up. I sort of put that in there. I don't, I don't specify too much. But yeah, our EMS mutual aids are usually in, in, in the city. And we did have a you know, structure fighter in the city that we are uh, a mutual aid with, and also a job it's, it's a good agreement. It goes both ways. They yep. come here, too. But, you know, we can have them yep. here this month. It's an awesome agreement. Good. It is. Yeah. We're very, we're very See, you had a, a cooperation with somebody, so you don't have to run for the accidents anymore. They come to you. Oh, I know today. Yeah. <laughs> I have to be outside looking at the light, too. The, your light that you had mentioned a while ago, that is repaired, by the way. Um, yeah, and I just have to be standing there and heard the squeals. And we've had a few out there. I'd say three or four out there right here at the corner. Mm -hmm. right? A blind spot a little bit or whatever, but there's been a few out there. Did you just wave then and go back in your office? Yeah, just, yeah, <laughs> okay Call the city. Yeah. <laughs> okay, anything uh, thank else? You. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. All right, Public Works. Mr. Bodinas. Well, it's nice to be here in person. Yay. Um, I apologize for getting, the, getting this report out in email there. But on to wastewater, uh, we still have the routine grinder pump failures and replacements going on. Um, we anticipate three grinder hookups, totally new hookups here within the next few weeks. It's uh, with the help of some hoses selling and getting into the winter season here. Um, of course, when a hose sells, well, sometimes that triggers the <coughs> So we are anticipating three hookups. We're actually anticipating a few more, but unfortunately they might have to wait until next spring because we're having trouble getting right and pumps and the tanks. So um, once you place an order for them, you're looking at about three or four months even if you get it. We're hoping it doesn't get worse here. Um, our staff has been uh, performing routine maintenance on our lift stations. Uh, they go through and they check them uh, a few times a week. Um, they get a lot of grease in them, so we're going to be having those uh, sucked out here probably within we try to kind of minimize that. We're going to keep going on our grease trap inspection and our education, telling people don't pump grease on your drains and throw, throw it in the garbage and stuff like that. But unfortunately, you're still going to get it, and the wet wells are basically the end point for this, for our, the end point for us. It's where everything collects. It. It's not really the end point, but everything's collecting there, so that's where all the grease is coming. But it has been kind of coating some of the controls and stuff here, so we're going to try to get that stuff out. Uh, actually, today we worked with the Marquette County Road Commission. Uh, we had a high manhole on Wright Street, and uh, the plow drivers didn't really like that last over. So uh, they contacted us, and we were able to work with them in conjunction with them, and they helped out with the signage and stuff, and we were able to put a self-leveling manhole in it. So uh, they got it done late this afternoon. looks really good. Um, so that should be a good go. We were actually able to fix the second one that was just down the street from that uh, by building some blacktop up on it. So the plow drivers are going to like this this winter, and they're not going to be window and they hit that and cursing our name. Um, water, uh, we actually, today we actually completed all our winterization of our hikes. So as long as nobody uses them, we should be in good shape. So that's, we'll keep our fingers crossed and hopefully people will tell us if they, for a fire or something, use the, the hydrants or something like that and go there and pump it and we don't have to worry about them freezing in the winter time. So, uh, but those are all done. Uh, our guys work pretty fast and efficient. Uh, we 
we've been working with the consultant uh, to upgrade or update our reliability study. Uh, as part of this last summer, Eagle came through and they did an inspection and do a sanitary survey of our system. And that's one of the issues that they wanted to see us update. I think our last one was done like seven years ago. I believe they were supposed to be done every five years. So they just suggest that we get that done. And that's basically just looking at the reliability of our system, making sure that everything can, uh, everything is proper in our system to uh, keep with our what we're doing here. And we don't anticipate any problems with that. It just has to be updated. And there hasn't been any large scale uh, changes in our system here in the last few years as far as the water goes. So we should be able to okay that, but we still gotta get it done pretty well. Um, we've also been uh, gathering all our data for our affordability and planning study. So we got all that together here. Uh, weeks ago and we were able to send that off to our consultant so they're going to start working on that and hopefully that will be completed I believe in the summer of 2022. So we'll get all that and if they need any more data we're, we're available to get them. Um, building and grounds, uh, our staff, you might have seen Andy out there today, he was winterization, winterizing all of our uh, irrigation systems at all our buildings so that should be all complete. Um, they've also been doing a lot of raising, trying to get everything. They, they know that they're on bar, borrowed time with this nice weather, so they've been trying to get as much done as they can. Uh, they've also been kind of going through all the windows and looking, making sure everything is sealed up. Um, you know, uh, some of the, the sealant and stuff that came out and stuff. So they're trying to put that back in there and hopefully that'll help with a lot of our staff members sitting next to cold windows. Maybe they won't be so cold this winter. So we're you know, working on that. Uh, one thing I don't have on here is the solid waste. I do have a meeting uh, tomorrow with North Country or Friday, I should say, about uh, North Country disposal, uh, about the, some of the strategies we want to try to take uh, with our solid waste. Uh, we are already putting in place some of our strategies for the first Wednesday, so uh, you'll start. We'll start implementing them come December. So we hopefully will start seeing a change there. That's all I have. Any questions? Any was that manhole on the on the south side, on the curve? I wonder how that flipped it open at one time. Sometimes, well, if, if something's not set right, I mean, it was only up like that much, but it was just enough for that plow blade to catch it and really be with it. This one, the, the thing was right out of there. I went by and it was right out of there, though. Was it today? No, it's oh. a while back. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. I was just wondering if a tire hits it or they flip them. Sometimes that does happen with those manholes, so we've, get, we've got called out before they'll flip them over. Some of that is because the manhole's here, and then it's up here, and then it's back here. When you're going down the road, yeah. uh, the city's worse than we are, but you know, and and frost, then you get busted for <laughs> drunk driving because you're trying to avoid them. And some of that frost, and you know, it, it moves them around, and, and then road, and everything starts breaking up around them. So that's something if we do see if you see something that's pretty kind of beat up, we will try to make. This one didn't look like it was beat up, but it was up just enough that when that plow came around there, he, he went. It ripped the wing off a, pl a plow. <laughs> Oof. So, they don't like that when that happens. So we, we were able to work in conjunction with them. So it was kind of a, they were able to set up a lot of the uh, uh, the road poles and the lane poles and the signage and all the cones and stuff. So that really helped us when we were able to get in there and get it done pretty fast. I'd just like to say this is why we try to maintain a good relationship with the road commission. They did a lot of the stuff that we didn't really have the resources to do to fix a problem with our system in their road. So um, we need to maintain those relationships at all costs, in my opinion. Yeah, and, we, and we do try to maintain as many relationships as we can because you never know when you might need somebody else's help. <laughs> We don't try to get too uh, worked up about things and try to help where we can and then maintain a good relationship when we get we do get help back quite a few times. Lenny, do you normally keep grinder pumps in stock when there's that long of a wait for them? Do you not have one or two that are generally in stock? We do. We actually try to keep a few in stock. So we do repair a lot of the, the older 210s, but what's happening is those things are getting 30 years old. Yeah. So they're wearing out parts are getting expensive expensive for those so it used to be we would take the pump out repair it and that would come on stock and put it back in but now what's happening is they're they're getting so wore out uh, and the parts are getting hard to, to 
get. And so then we were going to start replacing them with, with newer pumps, and now we can't even really get those very fast. So we're kind of starting to, so more and more of the old pumps that are coming out, we can't even repair them, so that's one less that we have in there. And so with these new ones, and even with those, getting the parts to repair them is getting very difficult. So it's it's the same thing for everything. It's just supply chain issues. I mean, it's it's everything from Christmas lights to Christmas toys to grinder pump parts. So but you do try to keep a couple pumps ahead so that you don't have to wait if somebody needs one. Right, yeah. yeah. So right now, I believe we have about three of them in stock right now that are ready to go. But we're starting to get a little nervous because let's say we all of a sudden got three. We don't anticipate that, but I mean, that's, we're trying to think ahead and trying to think ahead of the supply chain here and try to maybe get some more here, you know, place an order for them and say, hey, do we have any available, we're going to take and then, but that might be four or five months off, so. We had been ordering them six to, six to a dozen at a time. You just can't get that many at a time right now, so, and the lead time is longer. How many pumps do we have? It's not going to under. Yeah, well, I looked at the list today. I believe it's like 377. So we got to push it 400. Okay. Anything else for Lenny? Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Turn us off. <laughs> oh, yeah, I might as well. All right, next up is our favorite attorney, Mr. Zappa. Well, I'm happy to <clears throat> report there are no legal emergencies or uh, dire things happening. Um, though it has been a fairly busy month, um, we're in the midst of uh, vacating um, a short section of alley for a development that uh, will probably be occurring on US 41 shortly. Uh, dealing with the attorney for the developer uh, there. Um, we've looked at a couple of stormwater management plan issues, not new ones, but old ones, trying to fill in the pieces on um, uh, the status of a couple of older stormwater management plans. Um, I also attended the district apportionment uh, meeting with the county by, um, by Zoom, and it was kind of <coughs> apparent early on which direction it was headed. My role was more or less to gather information to give us a basis of, um, of a sound appeal, if uh, depending on which way it went. But it was soon fairly apparent that it was going to go mostly the direction we had preferred. So I maintained a pretty low profile in that one. Um, <clears throat> ongoing tax tribunal negotiations and issues um, on, a, on a weekly basis. Uh, these are mostly, at this time of year, not new claims, but trying to resolve and work out the pending ones that we have at the least expense possible. Um, there have been a couple of interesting FOIA requests that the clerk has had a question or two on, on just uh, determining which things should be redacted in the township's response, um, because not everything in a FOIA re uh, request should be produced. So uh, he and I went over the terms of the redaction. And um, as recently as about an hour ago, I reviewed a couple of Unifirst contracts um, where we have a situation of some unsatisfactory performance on the part of a supplier and just outlining the steps of how to possibly remedy that under the contract we're under. For the, it, it's a five year contract, and we're about a year and a half into it. And that's what comes to mind, at least since the last report I had given you. Okay. Any questions for Roger? Ernie? I have just one. I, I happen to be watching the Michigami session, and I just wondering, relating us to them, this is a more quiet meeting, is it not? <laughs> Typically. 
<laughs> That's all. I saw that too. Do you want some salt to run into that wound? <laughs> no comment. Mm -hmm. Okay, moving on. <laughs> Community linkage. I've got a couple things. Um, a month or two ago, I don't know, Bernie brought up, mentioned this planning and zoning guide. I'll sh hold it up so John can see it. This is Michigan Township Association planning and zoning guide, and uh, Mark oh, Wyckoff is the editor. But this particular story it, um, takes over the whole magazine. It's I think it's eight, two, four, six, eight pages. And I just want to point out a couple things um, about the dark store, kind of an update. I've also um, been doing a little research with Northern, and I talked to MTA. I might have more information for you, too, in the next meeting. Just some little tidbits here, half a dozen I want to mention. Significant Michigan cases addressing or, or directly impacting the big box theory, Lowe's Home Centers versus Marquette Township and Home Depot versus Brighting Township. I think we're all familiar with those ongoing. Um, that goes back to 2012 and 2014. That was significant in their 12 or 15 different communities that have been fighting the tribunal. And then, um, Delta County, uh, with the first Menards case that they had, the county was refunded $55,000, and Menards has said it received over $421,000 in refunds throughout the Upper Peninsula. Uh, one Kalamazoo suburban community, Comstock Township, the Costco was able to successfully argue that their $12.5 million project, building and land, should only be valued at $4 million. That's a couple things. Um, this is the northern one. I'll see if I can work on that for northern. Michigan Township Association's Council Robert Thal, we kind of all remember him, he's worked with us before, has suggested that the use of deed restrictions skews the use of the sales approach to value and provides support for why the cost approach is superior. Because there are three different methods for assessing a building. And, you know, Roger's an old pro at this now, too. He's probably got a second degree in tribunal issues. Retail industry defends their positions. This is Plainfield Township, as noted above, saying, they are only following the policy and law set by the state or local taxing authorities who have accepted the rationale behind the dark store theory, which means they have so many successful cases that, you know, you can go into the courtroom and say, well, we've already got 250 cases that have been solved, you know, settled with this in mind. Why not make it 251? So the precedent's already been set. Um, there is one statement in here that says, oh, let's have to see if I can find it. I thought I had them circled. Um, not zone for warehouse use. Yeah. Some of these you have to read the whole story in order to get it. House Bill 4909 was introduced in the 2015-16 session by then Representative Kivala and co-sponsored by 12 other represent representatives from both parties. It was tied to another bill and Representative Kivala gave a, a press release to Channel 6. Large national, quote, large national retailers have used what's known as the dark store argument to win huge tax refunds that will permanently decrease the property tax base in Michigan and are devastating to state and local government budgets as well as local zoning ordinance and master plans they've enacted to deal with the developments. Our bills would ensure that all businesses are assessed equally regardless of who they are, how large their business is, and whether they're a successful national business from outside of Michigan or, the, or whether they're a local retailer in Michigan. K 
Kibula goes on to say, end quote, Kibula uh, goes on to say that the national retailers should not be able to cut their taxes by arguing that new box stores are worth less than the purchase price of the land. Um, two more here. Senator Casperson, Senate Bill 524, uh, was hoping that he could close the so-called loophole by amending the General Property Tax Act. Casperson is quoted as saying, big corporations should not be the force behind the state's tax policy, a policy that is devastating local units of government and unfair to local retailers and residents. Unfortunately, the tax tribunal is letting this happen at the expense of our schools, libraries, seniors, public safety department, public transit agencies, and residents. So we know our, our representatives and senators were working for us back in the day. Um, Senator Casperson again in 2017 tried by offering Senate Bill 578 would have required comparables to have the same highest and best use and as part of the independent determination required by MTT. That's kind of involved. Senator McBroom introduced Senate Bill 39, which was identical to 578. He's addressing deed restrictions and covenant limitations. Senator Maturin, who um, was term limited, I think, he was one of the biggest. Representative Lefebvre and Rep Representative Brixey, those two are working on something right now that they're hoping to introduce this session, I believe. Wisconsin Governor Evers, or Evers, in 2019 made it a priority in his administration to close the dark horse, dark store loophole, but he hasn't been able to move it ahead. In other states, like Texas, California, Ohio, Illinois, Minnesota, and North Carolina, big box stores have continued to push the theory. So this is not, okay, so last paragraph. Where does that leave the retailers? big box and now others and communities. Until legislation or the courts settle this, retailers will have the upper hand and municipalities will have significantly less property tax revenues available to meet the needs of its citizens, leaving other taxpayers to bear those burdens. In the meantime, it will continue to be a taxing situation. This gentleman is, um, this was not Mark Whitecarf that wrote this. This is Mark Daneman, D-A-N-E-M-A-N. He's been a township manager. Uh, he's worked in land use and development, wireless telecommunications, solar energy, planning and community development, zoning administrator, and a leasing manager. So I'm sure it took him uh, quite a while to put these eight pages together. It's just amazing. But I did want to share that with you. Can you keep, can make me a copy of that? Sure. Right. Try to keep, um, keep you up to date on what's going on. This is just from August, so this is all new information. Um, the other thing I want to uh, let you know is the next meeting, November 2nd, I've been talking with uh, Lieutenant Scholander extensively in lots of emails. He sent me a bunch of information, not exactly what we were looking for maybe or what was requested, but I think it'll answer some of the questions. So I'm going to copy the two emails. They're very lengthy, detailing a whole bunch of stuff, put those in the packet, and then he gave me... 2019 and 2020, um, what did he call them, annual reports or something um, that they have to provide and get certified from the state. So I'm going to include those too. I did invite him and he said he would come and then he realized he had a meeting in Lansing that week. So I said, do you want to wait? Do you want me to present this information? He said, do whatever you want. Take all the information and share it with whoever you want. So that'll be on the uh, next meeting agenda. I'll give you all of that on upset. Okay. So that's community linkage from me. Anything else anybody wants to share, Dan? I don't know if it fits where it fits, but who? And this might be for John or or um, our attorney, but who is responsible for putting addresses on buildings? And it just jumped out at me today when I was driving up the highway where the new um, discount tire store, it just, there's these 
big, beautiful numbers on two sides of the building saying what their address is. But when you drive by 10 others, there's nothing. Is there some ordinance that we ha they have to have addresses on their building that could be you know, visible from a distance away? I guess I can't specifically answer that for Marquette Township. I know Chocolate Township had a specific ordinance uh, for fire response that the number of the address needed to be posted visibly in a certain size number. Um, I don't know that we have an ordinance that specifically addresses that here. I will have to check. I'm, I'm not certain of that. I have it in the back of my head that we might, and it's ancient if we do. But I, I don't uh, know if I remember um, having that discussion with Dulcie because they've been trying to do the fire addresses in the northern part of the township, and they were working with Powell Township. And Because I, I asked her one time, why don't we have some uniformity? Why are some of these roads either not named right or some of the street you know when they were trying to find certain houses to take pictures of or assess and she said that they went through that a bunch of years ago at the post office and it was a big bruja on how to name and letter these because of the fire department code so we either have something Dulcie knows we either have something or it's um, state or county there there is I recall maybe 20 or 25 years ago we had um, some folks who wanted to remain anonymous and they were refusing to post um, a number and that was a fire department issue also and I remember we forced them to do that but I can't exactly recall I recall the neighborhood it was in but I can't recall the basis on um, how we did that I can check up and follow up on that Okay. I, I will say in response to your question though this is pretty common in most commercial districts I I remember myself in areas that I'm not familiar with looking for an address number on a building and not seeing it for blocks at a time so in commercial districts it's pretty common not to post that number on the building well one came up for charter and charter used to be up on the highway and on the highway, they said, we've moved to so-and-so US 41. So I come down and I'm going, where the heck is it? It's I, in the Jimmy John's building, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. There was no address. There's, there's, there's no numbers posted. You know, then I, found, I saw, oh, Verizon in the window, something. So I, I think, I mean, it would just benefit people in general if we, if we have it, then Maybe we got to see about how we could enforce it and, and have them put these numbers on their buildings. Next time you go buy a discount tire, look at it. I mean, it just, boom. It, and it just went, wow, does that make sense? So maybe we can bring it up and we can look into this at one of the next meetings. Maybe, okay. maybe the Planning Commission should look at it. Yes. I think it goes behind beyond the Planning Commission. I think it's either state or county or something mm -hmm. fire code or it would help I mean that that comes to mind you know with my 42 years in the fire service it's nice to have an address that you can find and uh, I made a comment to clerk Ritari he's got a lit one right on his front mm -hmm. and I went what a great idea you know have it lit up for at nighttime and stuff and most people I've got them on my garage and mine are you know that big but I don't know why it's people aren't posting numbers and it's especially on the 41 corridor it's just if we have it let's look into it and get them out there okay anything else to share all right let's move on with 8a approved 2021-22 mta board approved legislative policy platform we did have this on last meeting agenda and MTA every year gives us uh, quite a long time to go through their platform these are items that they will uh, work with Judy Allen for the most part with their um, government liaison will will try to impress upon the legislators 
and um, they do the vision statement and the uh, different departments every year typically we get this at the MTA conference in April and on Friday uh, when we have our full um, municipal representative meeting these are the things that we kind of go through um, so anyway they gave us until next month so I'd like to get this out in the next couple weeks to decide if this is how we feel that they should work for the next year are there items that you don't like or you think are great or you don't care about or should we just say yeah everything's fine or how do you feel about it did you read it <laughs> I did I read it I'll make a motion to um, approve the 2021-22 MTA board approved legislative policy platform okay I'll second it support Pete comments Ernie on this we can support it and everything else but when you get back when you go on to the MTA uh, meeting on Friday as Lynn said these will come up and the resident the individuals there are going to have to vote on it and those that they approve will go go to the state state if they don't approve of one of them it's kind of dead at that point in time so what we're doing is we're supporting this for them to bring forward to that group at that point in time Hopefully everybody will be there in April if it's not COVID stopped or something. I did have a couple questions on here I wasn't sure of to throw at you. Um, on the second page top, the third bullet, it says allowed option, allow option for a local excise tax for the purpose of providing public recreational facilities and or public safety expenses related to increased tourism. Now, I know where that came from. It came from um, Representative Cam Benzi. Alger County has been struggling with uh, tourists taking up all their facilities or their equipment, whether it's ambulances or uh, fire trucks or EMS or whatever. And the local people are having a hard time getting the services because it's all taken up by the tourists. So they excuse me, approached Sarah and said, we'd like, to, you know, we'd like to propose that we do like a recreation tax on the hotels. And that's why I kind of knew about it. <coughs> I called Sarah right after I heard about it. And the problem in Alger County is that they have so much state and federal land, they don't have the tax base to help support their um, EMS and fire. So Sarah and I got into it and I said you know this isn't fair to keep taxing these um, tourists when they come up they already have a 12 percent hotel tax some of the cities have city taxes for them now you want to do another tax um, to penalize them just because of one county I said if that county has issues they need to go to the state or federal government and either get you know some kind of remuneration or something rather than penalize the whole UP so that's my two cents from a business standpoint and from from us having so many tourists in our community now QPAD and the LSCP is working on different ways of dealing with tourism and paying for infrastructure or um, repairs or damage or you know those kinds of things I'm not sure if this is the best thing to do um, They've already cut Pure Michigan funding about $10 million when it had a nine to one return on every dollar that um, Pure Michigan put in, they got $9 back. And it's been like that for multiple years. They cut, the governor cut $10 million out of that funding. So, you know, maybe this is near and dear to me, but I don't think taxing again is necessarily a good idea. Um, I did also have a question for um, Clerk Ritari, and he, he said he didn't think it was a problem. Down under elections, the third bullet says, permit the option for nonpartisan township offices to be approved for the township board and the electors. Because I told him that we had to choose what party we were going to be affiliated with at the township level when we came in. And he said that doesn't apply anymore. But I think he's wrong. <laughs> I think you still have to declare either nonpartisan or um, independent um, 
Republican or um, Democrat. So I don't, I don't know if that's, I know that's important because Ernie, remember some of the conferences we yeah. went to? Yes. That they were standing in the aisles when this topic came up. They were just crazy about it. Um, and then I didn't get a chance to ask him about allowing the option to increase the active number of registered voters per precinct. I don't, I don't know if that's good or bad or, or what. Um, and then down at the bottom, environmental and land use. It says preserve landfill capacities by directing appropriate materials to waste utilization facilities and support an increase in the state tipping fee. I, I love that to a rate competitive with nearby states while preserving a local tipping fee option. Um, I don't think they need a law that says that they can continue to raise tipping fees. I don't know. Those are the only ones that, that jumped out at me that I didn't really agree with, but I just wanted to kind of throw that out. I think some of this, what you brought up, will come up at the uh, MTA. There's going to be someone doing that, and all of a sudden the conversation will just kind of mushroom real quick and then yeah. there are many people that will get up in the middle of the aisle at the microphone and uh, do it like what I did and they just argue their points which is good because that each community is different and we shouldn't be treated all the same so any other comments we have a motion support to agree with their um, policy platform and then I can send this in November so all in favor aye, aye. aye. Opposed? Okay, I will get that out tomorrow. Thank you. Next up is to consider scheduling a budget work session to approve the CIP recommendations from the Planning Commission. If you have your calendars, it's kind of hard to do without Clerk Ritari because he has specific hours that he has to work in that varies. But we can attempt or we could even pick two days maybe and see which one would work for him typically sometime after two or three works for his schedule um, John what's your schedule like that you would or wouldn't be available just in case well, I, I think it's going to be specific to the day and ultimately you're going to have to schedule it and after this weekend my coaching responsibilities are over until next May or June so um, that's not the issue it's other potential conflicts that we'll just have to work around uh, and you know my calendar had been updating on my phone but it's not anymore so I don't have a written paper copy I can probably pull yours up so at least get an idea so does anybody want to tackle this next week we have County Township Association meeting on Wednesday at the landfill for whoever wants to do that. We have our strategic planning on Thursday. Is it next week at Marquette County or I thought it was this week? It is this week. This week? 27th. Well, Six solid waste is tomorrow, the regular solid waste meeting, but the County Township Association meeting is next Wednesday. The fourth Wednesday? I got it on the 27th. Yeah, that's what that's what I'm saying. The 27th. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, you want to go to the next week, maybe Wednesday, the 3rd of November. Does that work over to everybody's schedules. Well, November 3rd or November 4th. I was just going to say that Wednesday or Thursday, depending on Randy's schedule. At three. Yeah. That or would, not. It will does that work? Um, you might be off on the third and fourth, John. I shouldn't be off either of those days. Um, you just made a calendar about private medical. Oh, actually, that's right. My wife's having hip replacement surgery, I think, on the fourth. So the third would work. John? I think it would be good to put it beyond negotiations, if you could. Put it off for a while. 
Yeah, we can. We can put it at back on the next agenda. And Randy's here, too. Good is, idea. Is there any necessity, or is it that we have to do it right now, or, or is it just something this we have to do? No, we just don't want to forget to do it okay. like we have okay. in past years. There are yeah. some budget impacts in there, but ultimately I'm going to recommend that each department find a way to make their CIP for 2022 match our current budget requests, which I think most of them have anyway. Lenny might have an exception or two based on some more urgent needs like our lead copper rule compliance, that kind of thing, but um, I'll work with him on that. Okay. Those are things that are kind of out of our hands too. That has to be done. Too. Well, Correct. if we wait to reschedule it for the second of November, then we may have some Blue Cross numbers or health insurance too. We should have those within the next week or two, I'm okay. pretty sure. I think John's so, suggestion to wait until the next board is probably the best. Yep, we'll add it to the next agenda to schedule. November 2nd? Yep. We'll just schedule it that night. Okay, so we won't worry about it tonight. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay, so we don't need a motion on that. We we'll just move it. All right, community updates. What do we have for planning, Linda? Um, the planning commission met on October 13th. We are scheduling a special use hearing on November 10th on a short-term rental at 1818 Granite Avenue, Marquette, Michigan. We are also looking at a proposed extraction of earth products brought to us by the solid waste group um, we did approve the CIP requests as presented and sent them up back to the board the solid waste director um, did mention in his comments that the landfill should be good for 50 to 60 years so um, I did write that down so that is pretty much all I have Okay. And the rec committee didn't meet tonight, correct? I have a question. Do we still need members on the rec committee? The events committee is the Order. only one that we need. Events. Um, what have you got, Pete, on events? Uh, we're working on Christmas. We've got a meeting coming up on uh, the 26th. Uh, we just sent out, or Todd just sent out a little list of everything that has to be done and he assigned it to different people so we got that taken care of so we'll know a little bit more about uh, what's going to happen on next Tuesday the tree lighting is I believe is the 23rd yep. 23rd of November at the Westwood Mall and so all the plans are coming together so that's good looking forward to it when will you be able to tell us all the specifics then how you're going to do it? Pretty much same as last time. I mean, like <laughs> they, they they come they, the day uh, before the, our next board meeting before the 23rd. Yeah, you can tell us who can assign us responsibilities. Yeah, yeah. No, what, what we did last time, we just the people lined up. We spaced them out a little bit. They came up to see Santa Claus. He got it. If you want to take a picture, they take a picture, and then you come out this way and go out. So you are doing it the same way as yeah, last year? Yeah, pretty much the same way. Okay. And the kids are being told to write their letter to Santa and bring it with them, too. Yeah. John's going to read them. Um, Santa's <laughs> going to read them. I will not be reading them. <laughs> but it's under control anyways. I think it's we're looking forward to a good evening. Okay. Then they still go in the mall then and have cocoa, and or are we not doing Super that? For one, use takes care of that for us. Okay. So. And we don't have any public. We don't have any Zoom, so that takes care of that. Um, any announcements? Anybody wants to share? I did call um, Judy Schwabach today because I had emailed her a couple weeks ago and hadn't heard back. She's the um, lady who works with Senator McBroom for scheduling our um, group meetings you know the county meetings in the, com in the community room so he has a new um, I should have written it down I didn't 
even get the name, but it doesn't make any difference. He has somebody different uh, Ed, that he's working with. So this new guy is really uh, supportive of town hall meeting type things. And uh, she hopes to have Ed up here and then whoever else, if Sarah comes or Bo, um, in November for us to meet with them if, he want, if we want in the community room. It'll be off Friday, but she doesn't know which one. So I just wanted to give you a heads up. Uh, manager's report. So this, this report in particular, I focused a little bit on what's going on in, at the DDA. Um, just to summarize real quick, they did send out a survey to all the property owners in the district and did get some responses back, but I would say not a statistically significant number. So while the responses are important to us, we don't know that they tell us enough about where the DDA should be going with their priorities in this development plan they're putting together. So coming up in, over the winter, I do believe there will be some uh, public work sessions scheduled for the DDA business owners to help the DDA establish their priorities moving forward. There's a, there's a handful of them that uh, we think are pretty consistent with the Township Master Plan um, and all of the other planning documents that we have in place, recreation, you name it. Um, there's some pending land situations hanging out there that could impact DDA decisions as well that you're all aware of based on, on prior conversations we've had. So. I guess we'll be curious to see, but we do know that the DDA has adopted a half mill, or yeah, for two years, to gather seed money for the next connections of our multi-use pathway system from the highway to our local network. Um, other than that, we did get counter offers from both of the unions, which we'll be talking about later on tonight in closed session. I think, um, and hopefully Supervisor Durant and Trustee Marks will agree that we, we should be at a place where we might be able to put these negotiations behind us soon. Um, so fingers crossed on that. Any questions for the manager? What are some of the questions on the survey? I'll, I'll just look at your copy. I'd like to yeah, it was really a three question survey. Well and it was asking them to prioritize certain options okay, I just like to see if that's okay. yeah we can get you a copy okay Ms. Clerk would you mind reading our motions that we passed tonight he didn't tell you he didn't have tell to do that. no he did not <laughs> from the beginning from the beginning yeah <laughs> the, <laughs> just um just to verify yep okay now this is pertains to so we had the consent agenda first yeah yep. so we approved but that yeah by this. john and then second by pete and passed yeah okay. and, and then, then approved. the agenda was our agenda was john and then dan and passed okay. and and then Approval of the 2021-22 MTA board approved le legislation policy platform. Um, Linda and then Pete LaRue and it was approved. That's all we had tonight, so you got off easy. <laughs> oh, he did like not. Well, for 13 people. <laughs> oh, he owes you. <laughs> oh, he owes me. <laughs> Lucky yeah. That was perfect. Thank you. All right, and then I will add to schedule a different work session on the CIP and the next agenda. And then, like I said, we'll get some information on upset. Um, any board member comment? Anything anybody wants to add in? Okay, then we will go into closed session pursuant to MCL 15.268B, strategy and negotiation sessions connected with the negotiation of a collective bargaining agreement if either negotiating party requests a closed hearing. Move we move into closed session. Support. Motion and support. 
Um, let me make sure she gets. <laughs> we'll wait a minute. Not John and Ernie. Ernie next. Not, not quite yet. We have to vote. You good? Yeah. Okay. All, All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. 7.30. We are in closed session.